Since the Spring framework is the foundation of the entire Spring family, and the IOC container is at the core of the Spring framework, let's talk about it. IOC stands for Inversion of Control. The question you may have at this moment is, what aspect of control are they inverting? The answer is that the process of an object itself controlling the instantiation or location of its dependencies, the other objects it works with, is inverted. This control is moved away from the object to the IOC container of the Spring framework. The Spring framework uses a technique called dependency injection, or DI, to implement the idea of IOC. An injection is the passing of a dependency, usually a service, to a dependent object, a client. Passing the service object to the client object, rather than allowing a client object to build or find the service object itself, is the fundamental requirement of this technique. If the definitions sound abstract and dry, that's okay. Let me illustrate the concepts on the next slides. For example, this is my Java application, and it has five objects. Assume that object A depends on object B, B depends on C, D depends on E. This slide shows a dependency graph of my small application. What is a dependency? Let's look at A and B. A depends on B. A is called a dependent and B is called a dependency. It means A needs the service offered by B to work properly. If B is not working, A will not work. Without the Spring framework, when this application is launched, those objects somehow need to be created and introduced to each other. For example, since A depends on B, A is responsible for creating the object B so it can use B's services. This is the normal control. A dependent object needs to control the instantiation of its dependencies. The dependency graph can be complex in a non-trivial application. Instead of only five objects, we may have hundreds of objects. Then people start to think, can I simplify this process? Can I design an infrastructure object known as a container object and contains all the objects and is responsible for creating and managing them. No problem, that is the Spring IOC container. By the way, in the Spring framework, those objects are called beings. So from now on, I will call them beings instead of objects. You can think of beings as spring managed objects. So, how does this work? Based on the dependencies specified by each bean, for example, bean A says, hey, IOC container, I need an instance of bean B. Give it to me, please. The IOC container will create an instance of B and inject it into A. So now you see that the control of instantiating objects is inverted. A no longer needs to instantiate its dependencies by itself. This responsibility is moved away from A to the container, hence the name inversion of control. Of course, the container also needs to inject C to B, inject E to D. As a side note, if you are familiar with design patterns, you will realize that the Spring IOC container is actually an example of the factory pattern. That's right. The Spring IOC container is a huge bean factory. The Spring IOC container is also known as the Spring application context. How does the Spring IOC container achieve this? It looks like magic and it is very elegant. 
The inversion of control is achieved by a technique known as dependency injection, or DI. So how does the Spring IOC container, air quotes, inject beings into other beings that need them? This injection is done typically through constructor arguments. Don't worry, I will show you an example later on in the Hogwarts Artifacts Online project. I hope everyone can understand this IOC idea and how the Spring framework used dependency injection technique to implement IOC. This is a super important concept.